on to our dinosaur of the day, which is Allosaurus, and was requested by Facebook fan Tori. So thanks, Tori. Allosaurus's name means different reptile, and it got its name because its vertebrae was different from other dinosaurs. There are three widely accepted species of Allosaurus, including Fragilis, Maximus, and Jimedseni. And we'll be focusing on Allosaurus fragilis today, but there might be other species of Allosaurus. This includes Amplexus, Atrox, Europaeus, and Tendigarensis. So there's a lot of variation between some of these species and very little variation between others, so not everyone accepts that all of these are different Allosaurus species. Over a 30-year time span, eight different species of Allosaurus have been proposed, so... Again, it's not completely clear how many there are, but three are widely accepted. The most common Allosaurus species is Allosaurus fragilis, at least 60 specimens that have been found. But there have been a lot of dinosaurs mistakenly classified as Allosaurus or part of the Allosauridae family, and there's a whole long laundry list. And one of the reasons that there was all this confusion is that Charles Marsh, when he found the holotype Allosaurus, it was an incomplete specimen. And even though his rival Edward Cope had found a well-preserved Allosaurus specimen just two years after him, these later Allosaurus discoveries were compared to Marsh's incomplete skeleton. Because that partial skeleton is still the holotype, and to this day it still causes a little bit of confusion, there have been some scientists who want a neotype of Allosaurus to be declared. It would be a little bit unusual because a neotype is usually only called for when the original holotype is destroyed, lost, or when the author never names one. But in this case, it might be useful just to make it really clear what an Allosaurus is rather than just identifying it by a few bones. So again, Charles Marsh formally named Allosaurus Fragilis in 1877. And Allosaurus was one of the earliest dinosaur discoveries. It was discovered during Marsh and Cope's Bone Wars, which, again, is why some of the Allosaurus specimens may have been classified as a different species in their haste to name as many dinosaurs as possible. They may have had some inaccuracies. There's one pretty complete skeleton of Allosaurus found in 1883 in Colorado by a rancher named M.P. Felch, and H.F. Hubble found a more complete Allosaurus skeleton in 1879, but it wasn't examined until 1903 after he died. A man named Ferdinand Van Pier Hayden first described Allosaurus in 1869 as having a petrified horse hoof. However, this hoof was actually a tailbone, which Joseph Lady classified to the genus Antrodemus. Allosaurus fossils from all ages have been found, so they found eggs all the way up through adult specimens. Compared to its hind legs, Allosaurus did have relatively short arms, but compared to other theropods like T. rex, it had pretty substantial arms. They had three large claws on each hand, and they were underneath the claw was a dew claw. If you have a cat, you might be familiar with dew claws. It's basically a bone that's underneath a sheath. So we actually have a cast replica of a Allosaurus hand, which is really cool. And the claws look huge, but it's actually just the bone part. The actual sheath that went over it, like a fingernail type thing, would have been much bigger. And because of that, a lot of researchers think that they probably use their hands for grabbing prey. Um, it's not conclusive that they would have done this, but since they had such formidable claws, it's likely that they would have used their hands rather than just biting at prey like something like T-Rex would have done. So if you ever go to Dinosaur National Monument, which if you get the chance you should because it's a really great place to visit, you can see two different species of Allosaurus. There's Allosaurus fragilis and Allosaurus Jim Madsen. Jim Madsen is more rare. Actually, only one half of a Jim Madsen skull has been found so far, and it was separated, but it was separated along the midline, so you can see the left half. And the Allosaurus Jim Madsen specimen in Dinosaur National Park is a very complete specimen and even has the wishbone in place. The other species, Allosaurus fragilis, was one of the largest predators in the Morrison Formation, and it had teeth up to three inches long and could grow to 30 feet in length. 
which is about 10 meters. And at Dinosaur National Monument, the Allosaurus fragilis skeleton has one of the best preserved skulls, which is rare because it has a thin bone that can be easily crushed. Fragilis had a dis proportionately large skull, like other large theropods, and it had bony ridges like blunted horns over its eyes that was covered in a keratin sheath, which may have been used to attract mates. It weighed about three tons, and it used its serrated teeth to cut through flesh, and it had binocular vision but was limited to 20 degrees, so it would have to see prey directly in front of it, otherwise if the prey turned quickly, Allosaurus would only be able to use one eye to see the prey, would not have depth perception. So it could turn its head, but timing was a big factor in a successful attack. A 2013 biomechanical study by Eric Snively and his colleagues found that Allosaurus had a low attachment point on the skull. This means it can make quick, forceful, vertical movements with its skull, similar to falcons, where they grip prey with their skull and feet, then pull up quickly to remove the flesh and Allosaurus could probably move its head and neck quickly and with a lot of control. Going back to its teeth, it probably lost its teeth easily while feeding and could quickly replace them. Its lower and upper jaw had 14 to 17 teeth, and it had bones at the tip of its snout. This is called the premaxilla that had five teeth. Allosaurus was bipedal, and it had a long tail to help counterbalance its head with its S-curved neck. And like other theropods, Allosaurus had bird-like features, such as air sacs in its neck vertebrae and a wishbone. Its brain was similar to crocodiles, and it had large olfactory bulbs, but an underdeveloped area for assessing, which means that it might have only recognized a few smells, like for prey or for its own kind. It did have a high EQ, which means fairly large brain-to-body weight ratio, and so it was very intelligent, especially compared to other dinosaurs of its time. And it could hear low-frequency sounds. One kind of strange thing about Allosaurus is it had a gastrolium. This is a hanging belly ribs that are thinner than upper ribs and support and protect internal organs such as lungs. They may have aided in breathing. They're not attached to the backbone like in a human's ribs, but they are formed from the skin in the middle region of the body, so they are referred to as dermal bones. Young allosaurs had proportionately longer legs than adult allosaurs. So adults matured to have shorter muscular legs, probably to protect it from injury when tackling larger prey. But the younger allosaurs were quicker and better adapted to catching small, quick prey. As adults, they may not have been very fast due to their short arms that couldn't help break their fall. But in 1998, Dr. Bruce Rothschild from the Arthritis Center of Northeast Ohio found evidence of 14 fractured ribs in an Allosaurus that it probably got from falling, so it may have belly flopped while running. And an x-ray analysis of the Allosaurus found that the ribs had cracked and healed, so Allosaurus probably could handle a lot of injuries from running. Allosaurus was smaller and lighter than T-Rex, so in a race it probably would win. And there's estimates of top speeds ranging between 19 and 34 miles per hour. Allosaurus fossils have been found all over, including in the states Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, Colorado, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Utah, and it's actually the official state fossil of Utah. About 75% of all carnivorous dinosaurs found in the Morrison Formation are Allosaurus, in the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry in Utah, which has over 10,000 dinosaur bones, most of them are Allosaurus. Since the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry is in Utah, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that the Natural History Museum of Utah has a big exhibit on it. And it's one of the best mysterious archaeological demonstrations that I've ever seen. Basically, underneath the floor when you're standing at the exhibit of the museum, they have the bones laid out in a crazy arrangement, and then they have a couple of videos playing where they talk about different theories that scientists have of how the bones may have gotten there and why there are so many Allosaurus in one spot. There are so many theories because there is a really high density of Allosaurus fossils in that area, and they seem all jumbled up. So a couple of the theories that I remember was there was this bloat and float, they call the theory... <laughs> And the idea was that a bunch of dinosaurs died in a river and then they got all filled with gas when they started decomposing and then they floated down a river and eventually settled down. By that point, all of their bones had kind of scattered. And then there was another one where maybe there was like a quicksand or muddy 
quagmire situation where there were some dead or dying dinosaurs which attracted a bunch of allosaurs and then more and more of them kept getting stuck when they were coming to try to eat the other ones. But they're all very interesting theories and obviously no one has figured out what exactly happened. So if you're interested in allosaurus or that type of a mystery, you should definitely go to that museum and see that exhibit. It's a fun one. I think they present it as a murder mystery. So Allosaurus was a common predator of its time in North America in the late Jurassic, and it lived alongside Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Camarasaurus, Stegosaurus, and Camptosaurus. Allosaurus was probably an active hunter. While its bite was probably weaker than alligators, lions, and leopards, it may have used its skull as a hatchet, so it could slam its upper jaw onto prey and then tear out the flesh with its teeth. This is according to a 2001 study in Nature Journal. It probably preyed on stegosaurs and iguanodonts, and there is one famous allosaur specimen found with a stegosaurus pubis injury. This particular allosaurus got into a fight with a stegosaurus and died from a wound from a deep stab of a stegosaurus tail to its pubis. So stegosaurus could jab its tail like a sword instead of swinging side to side. There's no locking joints, so it moved like a monkey's tail. And it probably penetrated the allosaurus bone, and then the wound was probably fatally infected. This is based on a 2005 paper in the Carnivorous Dinosaurs from Indiana University Press. There's also been evidence of an Allosaurus bite mark on a Stegosaurus plate. And in 1914, C.W. Gilmore described three Stegosaurus tail spikes that broke, which may mean it had hit dinosaurs hard enough to break its spikes. Of course, Stegosaurs weren't the only dinosaurs Allosaurus fought. There's tooth marks found on an Apatosaurus vertebrae. And, of course, Allosaurus also shared an area with Ceratorus and Torvosaurus, which are other theropods. So they may have gotten into some fights. Allosaurus could open its jaws very wide because it was double hinged, and it could have probably grazed flesh, which may be one way it could have attacked these large sauropods and eat part of them without actually killing them. Allosaurus hunted by overpowering prey, and they may have hunted in small groups so that they could take down large sauropods like Brachiosaurus. They would definitely not have been able to do it alone. However, there's actually not much evidence of gregarious behavior. Instead, it's mostly antagonistic towards each other. There's a lot of injuries and bite wounds to skulls. Maybe Allosaurus was trying to establish dominance in a pack or settle some sort of territory dispute. So they may have been too aggressive to hunt in packs. Also, modern carnivores such as lizards, crocodiles, birds, rarely work together, and they're often territorial and kill intruders, even if it's of the same species. So Allosaurus may have attacked its own kind for rights to feed, or for mating rights, or maybe a potential mate didn't want the attention. As a counterpoint, some other scientists think that Allosaurus may have hunted with mobbing behavior and basically tried to scare one animal out of a herd and then tried to tire it out by chasing it around and then finally killed it and eaten it as a group. But neither of these theories have been confirmed. True, but scientists think that juvenile allosaurs may have formed their own packs and avoided adults until they became adults themselves, which might help show how they are usually antagonistic towards each other. They probably reached adult size at age 15 and lived up to age 28, according to a 2006 study in the Journal of Morphology. One of the most famous allosaurs is known as Big Al, who lived a very hard life, had 19 deformities from disease and injury, though most of them healed. But even if all of them had healed, Al would not have been able to live to be that old. Big Al was discovered in 1991. Scientists found 95% of this juvenile specimen. It was 26 feet long. And BBC made a documentary about Al called The Ballad of Big Al. Big Al weighed more than 3.3 tons. It was discovered in Wyoming, but again, he had damage to his ribs, his toe bones and vertebrae, as well as a bone infection known as osteomyelitis. This is when microorganisms infected the bone, which was damaged in a way that caused it to break and was attacked by the dinosaur's immune system. And as a result, Big Al had misshapen bones. He also had an infection that probably lasted up to six months. So poor Al definitely had a hard life. In 1996, the same team who discovered Big Al found Big Al 2. 
and Big Al 2 is the best preserved skeleton of its kind so far. The way Big Al may have gotten so big is that allosaurs seem to have grown about 330 pounds a year, which could get you to three tons in not too much time. <laughs> if you want to see some allosaurus fossils for yourself, you're in luck because allosaurus fossils, there may be more of them than any other type of large theropod, so they're found in museums all over the world. Again, you can find some at the Dinosaur National Monument, and at the Dinosaur National Monument, you can see a real Allosaurus fragilis skull at the Quarry Exhibit Hall. And you can also see an Allosaurus fragilis specimen at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We also saw a few replicas of Allosaurus when we were going through Europe because they're so ubiquitous and interesting looking that they seem to just be all over the place. Allosaurus is part of the Allosauridae family, which is part of the group Carnosauria. Marsh named the family in 1878, but the name wasn't really used until the 1970s. Instead, the term Megalosauridae was more often used, but it became the quote-unquote wastebasket taxon. Before 1976, most publications referred to Allosaurus as Antrodemus, which is a species that Joseph Lady discovered in 1870. But in 1920, Charles W. Gilmore found that Antrodemus' tail vertebrae was the same as that of Allosaurus, and said that Allosaurus should be changed to Antrodemus because it was named first. But then in 1976, James Madsen published his monograph and said that the name Allosaurus should be used because Antrodemus was based on poor quality findings with not many diagnostic features or even any information on the geological formation where the one Antrodemus bone came from. Again, this is the bone that was described as hoof-like, but it was actually a tail vertebrae. So the Allosaurus monograph is basically a series of studies of Allosaurus. And Madsen's monograph led to a whole bunch more studies on Allosaurus, which is probably why one of the species is named after him. Allosaurids were medium to large sized carnivorous dinosaurs, and they were great hunters. Most Upper Jurassic and Lower Cretaceous carnosaurs are somewhat closely related to Allosaurus, 